Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Jody Richardson Delgado. Today we're going to be talking about personality. Personality is a unique and relatively stable pattern of thoughts, feelings, and actions. Some of the major personality theories started with Freud and his followers. They are the psychoanalytic and psychodynamic theories. First, Freud was the individual who came up with the psychodynamic or psychoanalytic theories. You'll hear both terms. And he had many students that worked with him and they branched out from Freud, agreeing with many of his concepts, but also disagreeing with many of his concepts. They're called the Neo-Freudians. Um, they include Adler, Jung, and Horne. One of Freud's theories that he talks about are, are levels of awareness. Now you see the picture of an iceberg and you see everything that is above the water is our consciousness. Our consciousness are things that we are aware of, thoughts that are happening right now, things that we can see and hear and touch. So that's our conscious awareness. Just below the water is our pre-conscious, and our pre-conscious are memories and knowledge that is stored. So things that we can bring very quickly to conscious awareness. Um, who was your third grade teacher? Questions like that that you can recall very quickly. Now unconsciousness are our fears and moral urges, irrational wishes, and selfish desires. You see, this is at the lowest part under the water. These are things that we are not aware of. These are things that are guiding our behavior that we're not really aware of. So have you ever found yourself eating something and you're not exactly sure why? Or maybe you have a really good friend who keeps dating the same kind of loser over and over again, but they're a really nice person and you can't quite make that connection as to why they're dating the same type of person. Freud says this is all part of our unconscious. We also have a structure of our personality that includes the id, the ego, and the superego. The first part of our personality that we are born with is the id. And you notice in the graphic that the id lives in the unconscious. And the id operates from the pleasure principle. So the id wants what it wants when it wants it. Reminds me of a very out of control two-year-old. Doesn't really care about what another person feels or cares about, really just is worried about pleasure for itself. Then the ego develops. The ego, you can see from the graphic, is able to access both the unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious awareness. The ego operates off of the reality principle. So the id wants what it wants when it wants it, and it sees that you have a piece of cake that the id really wants right now because it's really hungry. The ego is going to be the one to have to try to control the id and let the id know, no, that's not ours. And this person might get upset if we steal the cake from them or try to take it without asking first. So the ego has to really work with the id, operating off of the reality of the situation. The third part of the personality is the superego. The superego is really the part of us that looks at the rules and standards of society, of religion, of parents, and tries to hold us to those high standards, almost as if this is the perfectionist part of who we are. So the ego has to compromise with the superego, constantly in struggle with the superego and the id in between. The id wants to do what it wants when it wants it because of the pleasure principle. And the superego is constantly operating off of this morality principle where everything needs to be done to perfection. And the ego is in the middle, kind of torn between these two forces. Another thing that Freud talks about are the psychosexual stages of development. This is the more controversial part of Freud's theory. What Freud brought to us with the psychosexual stages of development was he was the first person to talk about these developmental stages that we go through in our development as children. So in other words, a young child is not going to think and be the same as an older child, as someone who is maybe a few years later. So we're constantly growing and developing. And when we grow and develop, we go through stages. And during these stages, we have crises. That's the major structure of Freud's theory. And you can see that structure has been used by other theorists like Piaget and Erickson. However, the content 
of the psychosexual stages of development was argued by many, many theorists. So the first stage of the psychosexual stage of development, according to Freud, was the oral stage. This is zero to 18 months, and this is really moving from infantile dependency toward autonomy. This is learning to explore the world around us through putting things in our mouth. And if you watch infants, you see them, they're constantly putting things in their mouth, they're exploring the world around them in this way. Now, what can happen if we get stuck in this stage of development is we become overly dependent. Other things that can happen is we become what's called orally fixated. You may have heard that term before. And so someone who is constantly having to put something in their mouth, maybe they, they had trouble during this stage. And what Freud talks about during this stage, the major crisis that we have to overcome is weaning from the breast or the bottle. And if we don't do that successfully, then we can become overly dependent or orally fixated. Then the next stage, 18 months to 36 months, is the anal stage. And this is where we learn to exercise control over our body, over our impulses. And this is important because it can lead to, according to Freud, obsessiveness later in life. So this was a lot about potty training. And Freud talks about potty training in some of his writing and how important it is if we have a harsh experience being potty trained versus a more relaxed experience. This can really impact this stage of development. We can become anal retentive. You may have heard that term before, and that comes directly from these psychosexual stages of development. Someone who is anal retentive is someone who has to make sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted, every rule must be followed or the opposite can happen as well. So someone who did not successfully go through this stage may be very messy, they can't be organized, they can't keep things together. So that can be a problem as well. The next stage is the Oedipus complex. This is ages five to about six years of age, and this is where we master competitive urges and acquiring gender role related behaviors. Now this is related to Greek mythology and Freud talked about how young boys in particular fall in love with their mothers but realize that they're not actually going to ever be able to marry their mothers because their fathers are bigger and stronger than they are. And therefore, this is going to be a problem for this young boy. So instead of trying to overtake his father, he starts to identify very closely with his father. Reminds me very much of some of the commercials or things that you see when young boys are imitating their fathers. You see dads sit down and they cross their arms and their sons will cross their arms as well. These are some things that you'll see just naturally occur with children that are this age. You also ask a young child at this age who they're going to marry and they're typically going to say that they're going to marry their mom or they're going to marry their dad. And so Freud talks about how we learn our gender roles during this stage of development as well. If we don't overcome this, then we can really have issues with competitiveness later on. The other issue that is specific to females, yes, females do fall in love with their fathers and have the same issues with their mothers, but females during this stage, according to Freud, develop what's called penis envy. And this is where girls realize that they are different than boys and envy the penis. And this is something that girls have to spend, according to Freud, their entire life trying to get over. This is one of the biggest debated aspects of Freud's theories. And many theorists have gone on to disagree with this part of Freud's theory. But if you've ever heard the term penis envy, that's where this comes from. Then we have latency, and this is six years to puberty, and really this is just where your energy is spent playing with others and figuring out life's rewards. And then we have the genital stage, and this is puberty onward, and this is where we mature sexually and we start to become sexually intimate with others. The next part of Freud's theories are the defense mechanisms. This part of Freud's theories really is something that we still use today. The psychosexual stages of development we really don't use in therapy or really anything today, but with the defense mechanisms, we do use many of this today. So the defense mechanism, repression, is about repressing an unconscious or some type of memory 
that we don't want to remember and it helps protect the ego from trying to deal with that memory. Denial is another mechanism that we use. Denial involves blocking external events from our awareness. So this is the alcoholic that denies having any kind of drinking problem at all. Projection. This is an individual who starts to project what they feel or motive onto another person. So an example might be, you might hate someone, but your super ego tells you that such hatred is unacceptable. So you can solve the problem by believing that they hate you. Another defense mechanism is displacement. So displacement is satisfying an impulse such as aggression with a substitute object. This is someone who is frustrated by their boss at work, but then they go home and they take it out on the dog or they take it out on the kids. Regression is another defense mechanism, and this is where you regress into an earlier stage. Um, reminds me very much of when your, your child is a toddler and you have the second child, and that toddler who maybe was able to you know, go potty on the potty by themselves, but suddenly this new baby is born and suddenly they start having accidents again. That's regression. They gre regress into an earlier stage of development. Sublimation is another defense mechanism. This is a more mature defense mechanism, and this is where we satisfy an impulse, such as aggression, with a substitute object in a socially acceptable way. So if someone feels some type of aggression and they're angry at something, instead of taking that anger out on someone, maybe they go play an aggressive sport or they start boxing with a boxing bag or something like that. That is an example of sublimation. Jung was one of the students of Freud, and while he agreed with many of Freud's ideas, he actually didn't agree with some of his ideas, such as the psychosexual stages of development. He also looked at consciousness in a different way than Freud. So he felt that the ego was the conscious mind, and these are the things that we are aware of, very similar to Freud's definition. He also looked at a personal unconscious. These are our memories. These are the things that we can recall, things that are important to us. Then he went further and talked about a collective unconscious. And he talked about our connection as human beings. And he talked about our ancestral history as well as archetypes. And this is how we are connected to our ancestors through time. This is also how we are connected to one another as human beings. So some of the examples of archetypes and some of the collective unconscious that we experience is that it's a pretty universal experience to fear snakes and to fear heights. These are things that we share as a collective. So there's certain human experiences that Jung was really interested in in his collective unconscious that Freud really didn't talk about in his theories. So there's some pros and cons to the psychoanalytic and psychodynamic theories. Some of the pros include an emphasis on the unconscious, and we've seen some empirical methods, especially with the defense mechanisms. Some of the cons, it's difficult to test things like the psychosexual stages of development, and actually we have looked at those, and we really don't see a lot of evidence for those. It's hard to test the unconscious and unconscious awareness. There seems to be an overemphasis on unconscious desire and how that is guiding our behavior. There's also sexism with the penis envy. That's one of the major features of sexism. And there's also lack of cross-cultural support in this theory. I hope this video has helped. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe.